this is so exciting. We're now getting new information along with the very first pictures coming in from Pluto. This is at Johns Hopkins now. Let's listen in. That the water is there in great abundance. Uh, and actually, models predicted hey that, but it's nice to see it driven home. Well, the other thing that that means, as John said, is that the volatiles are just a frosting, just a veneer on the surface. Now, the sticky point in this is that Pluto's atmosphere is being lost to space at a rate of a few times 10 to the 27th molecules per second, tons per second, and over the age of uh, the solar system, that corresponds to the loss of an equivalent layer of between 300 meters of nitrogen and three kilometers of nitrogen. So if we only see a veneer, which we now know, uh, what's going on? What Kelsey and I uh, predicted in that paper is that if we saw steep topography on Pluto, and therefore we're seeing only a volatile veneer, then there must be internal activity that's dredging nitrogen up through cryovulcanism or geysers or some other process that's active into the present on this planet. Now, we haven't found geysers and we haven't found uh, uh, cryovolcanoes, but this is very strong evidence that'll send us looking as we get more and more data across the surface of the close approach hemisphere to look for evidence of exactly these phenomena. Interestingly enough, that paper submitted in May was accepted today. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> and, and I should point out that the editor of the journal is only learning of the results we're t the telling you now because she's watching it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that summarizes the uh, primary uh, uh, things that we want to tell you about the data that landed just this morning. Each of these images and data sets have a lot more to tell us about uh, Pluto's history and about small planets and how they are formed and evolve. I just want to make one more comment about uh, Tom Regio. You know, uh, we could see the heart very far from Pluto. Uh, when we were still 70 million miles out and only barely resolving the planet, a little better than Hubble can do from three billion miles away, you can see that shining like a beacon. And because it's the brightest and most prominent feature on the planet, that's why we want to informally call it Tombow Regio for the discoverer of Pluto. One more hand for the Tombows, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before we take questions from the media here and on the phone lines or on social media, I want to take a moment to say it has been a remarkable week. It has been magical. And as we transition from the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory here to NASA headquarters to do press conferences, the world has been watching. Dr. John Grunsfeld, five-time space shuttle flown astronaut, Hubble repairman and head of Science Mission Directorate of more than 100, almost 100 missions with New Horizons being one of them. He is a household word, household name, and households nationally and internationally. Alan Stern, yes you are, exclamation point. And the New Horizons team and the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory household names. Show the world how much you appreciate that and what they have done this week with a nice and as loud as you can round of applause for their accomplishments. Yeah.